All right, so let's talk about opening a nail business. All right, so as you can see, I am actually working in my nail studio, my little nail room right now, and I am making decent amount of money, so I have no need to go and take on overhead. But let's get into it. Why aren't more black nail techs opening up businesses, right? Why are there so many oriental salons everywhere? Now, quick short story. Uh, my sister moved in her place and her landlord, he asked me, what do I do for a living? So I said, I will, I have multiple businesses. I have an online business and so forth. I'm in school and I do nails. And he said to me, nails, it sounded like something strange, right? Like he looked at me crazy. I'm like, yeah, I do nails. And he's like, I thought only the Orientals did nails. And I was like, what? Where have you been? So anyways, let's get into this. So he had a misconception that only Orientals do nails. Now, I don't know what world he was living in, but he is a man. So I'm going to just charge it to the game. Now, a reason why he might say that is because every plaza where I live, there is a Oriental salon. If you do find black nail salons, they are small and they sometimes are in places you don't want to go. All right. So let's get into why this might be happening. Now, number one, to open up a nail business, the things you are going to need, you are going to need to incorporate your business. All right. So first thing first. In the state of Florida, to open up a nail salon, you are going to need a cosmetology license or a nail salon license. All right. So the first thing that they are saying in the state of Florida is that you need to go to nail school, right? So if you were a owner and you weren't planning on working in a salon, you would still need to go to nail school basically because they are saying that you need this certification from nail school to even open the salon. All right. So let's move forward. So you're going to go to nail school, right? Get your little certificate, right? Now, if you want, you don't have to do the whole cosmetology course. You could just do the nail course. A lot of times you could just do the nail course, but a lot of times these cosmetology school, they trick you into doing the whole cosmetology program or the school you choose might not do nails only. They might do hair and nails and skincare, but really if you just want to do nails only, you could go to school just to do nails. You just have to find your school that does nails. Boom. All right. That's the first thing. Now, the second thing, what you need to do, you need to go form your company. You need to go form an LLC. All right. So you got to go on sunbiz.org and you got to create your LLC. Make sure it's registered with the city and state. All right. So after you did do that, you have to go contact the, um, so once you get the LLC, then you're in business. All right. But the thing is a lot of times to open up a business, you need funding get funding you have to know business now if you walk into bank of america or you walk into wachovia chase those regular banks and you say hey i'm opening up a nail salon sometimes they're going to tell you hey we're not going to give you a loan right so you have to look to the sba or just different forms of um getting a loan and the money is the problem all right now a lot of times black nail salons will save up our money and we'll open up our spot and then the salon will be closed down because why we are using our money right so to run a successful business you have to use other people's money so you need to let these banks give you this money all right so the way how you can get this bank to get you this money is you have to try to get your sba loan or some kind of loan in order for you to get these loans you have to look at the requirements a lot of times they want you to be in business for at least three years and they want to make sure that you have business credit all right so if you're not in business for three years don't go walking up in nobody bank asking for no loan. All right. You're not going to get it. So you want to make sure your credit score is good. Now, if you have bad credit score, then it might work against you. All right. But a lot of times you could go and try for SBA loans and they'll ask you for a lot of things. All right. But once you cover those requirements, you will be able to get the loan. Now it depends on the person. Are you dependable enough to pay back this loan? If you want to start out your business and you want your business to look nice and posh, and just clean unless you are a rich person you are going to need a loan so the problem is a lot of black nail techs are not getting these loans and that's the reason why we don't have these salons in ever plazas some reason the orientals they have figured this out how to get these loans and they are taking advantage of the system and they are getting these loans and they are opening their salons 
okay? One open a salon and they already know how to do it. The other person open up a salon and know how to do it. And they tell each other how to do it. Now, if somebody tell you you had to work for yourself or work somewhere and file three years of tax return, get good credit, and then you can apply for a business loan from the S SBA, would you do it? The time where we file our tax returns, we're not filing that we're making profits. So if you're not making profits, how do you plan on getting a loan, right? So you have to give. So it's kind of like a paid game, right? You have to give saying you're making some kind of profit in order for you to get. So you have to think about making those sacrifices for those three years and get everything you need to go ahead and get these loans. All right. Now, sometimes your banks will give you the loan, but a lot of times you have to probably go through the SBA because these funds are government backed, right? Right. So it's kind of like this. It's kind of like, okay, I'm going to lend you the money because your credit's bad and you have not been in business for two or three years and I'm taking a chance on you. And the only reason why I'm taking this chance on you is because the government says, if you should forfeit on this loan, they got my back. All right. So I'm going to lend you this money because it is a guarantor by the government. Okay. So that way you'll get loans from the credit unions and so forth if you go through the SBA. Now, a lot of times you have to go through the SBA and you have to read, my friends. All right, you have to read and you have to go in there. Once you cover all these requirements, then you will be able to get your loan. Now, a lot of times we'll go and we'll do all we gotta do. And when we get the money, we're not spending the money on what we're supposed to spend the money on, right? The most important thing that you need in your nail business is to have capital, right? What happens that month when it's really, really slow and nobody walks through the door? Do you have that money and capital to pay these people their rent, right? For the business, right? That brick and mortar store, do you have this $1,500 or $2,000 to pay? If you do not have it, your nail salon is going to be closed down. So a lot of times when you're running business and you think you're making profits, you're really not making profits that money needs to be in capital right that money needs to be in capital and put to the side for that rainy day a lot of times when we start making that money we start spending that money gucci prada blah 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 no you put that money to the side for that rainy day for that one month when there's nobody walking in through the door right a lot of businesses fail in the first five years okay a lot of them fail in the first year first thing is when you run in the business you have a lot of overhead See, now I can do 10 customers a day and that money is all mine, right? But at the end of the day, I have to buy back supplies, advertisement. But if you have a brick and mortar store, you're covering bigger bills, you're covering rent, right? You're covering insurance, you're covering taxes. Sometimes you're covering payroll. Like it's a lot, it is a lot. And you possibly can't even do nails for $70, $80 because you cannot risk losing clients thinking you're charging too much. Even though the work that you're doing it's worth that much, you might have to charge less if you work in a salon, depending on where your salon is located. So, unless you are a business-minded, savvy person, and you know what you are going to do when you get that money, you will not be owning any nail salon anytime soon. Now, you can save up your money and you can open your nail salon, but even if you did save up maybe $10,000, let's say $10,000, right? Your rent is a thousand dollars. You got light, you got water, right? Then you have to fix, you know, fix the place up, bill it out. You got to paint the walls, get the furniture, right? You got to put tiles on the floor. You got to advertise. Like this is going to run you way over $10,000. But what you could do is take that $10,000 and put in the bank and then get a loan against that $10,000. So you don't spend your own money. So. You're spending the bank money and when you're making money, you're slowly paying them back, right? But at the end of the day, and there's a month that you need money that nobody's walking in through the door, keep in mind, you already spent the, the bank money. You still have your $10,000 in assets sitting there in the bank, right? And you could pull a little bit of money from that to cover those slow months. So you have to start thinking like a business person, okay? And that's the real reason why a lot of times more black nail techs aren't opening business because we're not thinking more like a business person. And you cannot think like a business person if you don't know about business. So moving forward, you're doing these nail courses. We also need to do business courses because if you find out how easy it is to get some of these loans, 
a lot of you guys would have been on those loans a long time ago and that's what these oriental salons are doing they are going in they are getting their tax returns ready they are making sure they have their paperwork and they have everything together and that's why they're opening salons in every plazas all right so at the end of the day i'm not going to knock anybody that's oriental for opening their salons because a lot of times those people are working from morning until night seven days a week so that's on them but for my black nail techs that's out there who are trying to open your own business these are the things you're going to need now i don't know in other states but i know in the state of florida you have to go to cosmetology school or nail tech school if you want to be a owner now i don't think that's right you shouldn't have to go to school to be an owner because you can always hire people but that is one of the requirements that they require all right so moving forward a lot of times if you go to nail school then you'll have a chance to become a salon owner which is good but at the same time try to learn a little bit about business now in business you never want to spend your money you always want to spend the bank the credit union money all right and you can always go and try to get your private lending. the worst person lending money is your family because they expect to get their returns right away and sometimes business you don't make a profit sometimes so even two three or even four years right business is hard and you have to stay established and people have to know you're in that spot for three, four or five years before they even become a regular. They don't wanna get used to you in two, two years and then you're gone, right? And now they have to find somewhere else and go. And that's why a lot of businesses fail within the first year to the first five year because we're not being business savvy, all right? So the money that you're making, if you think you're turning profits within your first year, you're not turning profits, right? What you need to do is put that money to the side and you need to put that money now for a rainy day for those days that there's nobody walking in through the door so you can keep your doors open. And keep in mind, you need to have like six months of this money put down to the side. So if your rent for your salon is 1,500 a month, could be less, could be more, times that by six, and that should be your capital, right? That should be your money put to the side to cover these expenses. Now, if you have that on the side, then you're in good standing. But if you have $0, put down for those empty days when nobody is walking in through the door you are going to lose your ten thousand dollars that you invested in your salon and all your money is going to be gone all right so the smart thing we need to start doing nail tech is get other people's money all right and when i say get other people's money i am talking about the banks the sba all right go on the sba website read up about business and see if you can apply for one of these loans and if you are ready for business, get into it. Or you can even go and get yourself a little business course and learn about financing, learn about these things, learn a little bit about accounting, learn how to manage your money, learn how to keep your books. This stuff is very, very important. What you don't know nail tech, you don't know. All right, so I'm not gonna get into any more details in this video, but that's the reason why a lot of black nail techs aren't opening up more business because sometimes we just don't know how to. All right. I hope this video helped you. And if you did like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe so I could create more videos like these or even go more in depth so I can help you on your nail journey. All right. So thank you for watching the Biz of Nails, Jules Nails, Body Cal, Jules Nails, and all the other things. And don't forget to like and subscribe and watch my other videos. Thank you again. Bye bye.